waiting for the recording to start. OK, so welcome to your session 15 of your STA 1610 tutorial, online tutorial. Um, today we're going to discuss study unit 8, which will enable you to do assignment 4. We're going to study unit 8 covers confidence interval. And I think on WhatsApp I did share that um, I'm going to split study unit 8 into four uh, sessions so that we cover every component or every section of study unit 8 in different days. So, and I also said you need to also remember the learnings or the knowledge you learned in study unit six and study unit seven, which is normal distribution and sampling distribution, but more so the sampling distribution because some of most of the concepts that we've learned in sampling distribution, we are still going to continue to use those concepts today. We are still going to use the Z cumulative standardized normal distribution table that you know that it's got the positive and the negative side to it. We will continue using that table when we go find other values. Um, and yeah, so let's get to it. By the end of today's session, you should be learning one of those objectives that are there. So, you know, at least two of them. We will learn the basic concepts of confidence interval, how to build the confidence interval. We're going to learn all those building blocks because once we've learned them, then it will be easy to do the following. We should be, it will be easy for us to construct a confidence interval for the population mean. And Today, we're only going to cover when the population standard deviation is known. And you will see what I mean by saying when the population standard deviation is known. Next, on Saturday, we will cover the population standard deviation when it is unknown, because then, then we introduce a new table, a T table or a T test table. Then on Wednesday the following, we're going to learn how to construct construct confidence interval for the population proportion. And here we're going to use the same table that we're going to be using today and the one that we've been using all along, which is the cumulative standardized normal distribution. So but for today only, we learn the basic concepts and we learn how to construct a confidence interval for the population mean when the population standard deviation is known. So what is confidence interval? Confidence interval is one of those inferential statistics. You remember in, at the beginning when we started with stats, we said statistics has two branches, the descriptive statistics where we describe the data and we also have inferential statistics where we make conclusion about the population based on the sample. So confidence in tap is one of those that we use. So why am I not mentioning the normal distribution then and also the sampling distribution? Those form part and base of what do you need to know how to do confidence interval? So we still, um, let's say those are introductions to what's doing inferential statistics so that you know the concepts and then you can apply them. Uh, the sampling distribution, we use it in the hypothesis more, more often because we in the hypothesis testing, we use the Z-score, which is what we call the test statistic. But now you would have learned how to calculate it. You know how to use it. In hypothesis testing, we will use that 
in the in testing the hypothesis of a population or of the proportion. Population mean or the proportion. Confidence interval also is one of those inferential statistics that you can use to estimate the value of your population mean using your sample um, par, uh, sample statist statistic, which can be the proportion or the mean, and we're going to learn that. Today, we're only going to learn about the mean. So with points estimate, it is just only a single number, which a point estimate can be the mean or the proportion. In a confidence interval, it provides additional information about the variability of that estimate. So what it means is if I have a confidence interval, so with confidence interval, it means there should be it's an interval and with interval, there is the lower boundary and there is the upper boundary. So when I have those lower boundary and upper boundary, I need to make sure that within those boundaries, my estimates fall within. So we're going to create or construct a confidence interval, meaning we're going to know what our minimum value is and what is our highest value. And use those values to determine whether my point estimate falls within those and make a conclusion. In your module, you do not need to know how to make conclusions about the point estimate. The only thing you need to know is the concepts and then you need to know how to calculate the confidence interval. You do not need to know how to interpret it. It's not um, a prerequisite for you to know how to interpret it, but I will show you how to interpret it as well. So like I said, point estimate we use them to estimate or to make conclusion about the population. So we know what the population parameters are, either the mean or the proportion. So if it's the mean, it's the mu. If it's proportion, is the pi. We can estimate these population parameters by using the values that we get or the measures we get from the sample, which are your statistics. For example, we can use the mean of a sample, which is your sample statistic. We can use that to estimate the population. We can use the sample proportion, which is your sample statistic. We can use that to estimate the value of your population proportion. And the mean and the and the sample proportion, the sample mean and the sample proportion are what we call the point estimate. And you will learn every time we do confidence interval, I will constantly be saying point estimate. You need to know that a point estimate will be the value of your sample mean or proportion, not the population mean or not the population proportion, but the sample. Okay, I hope we are on the same page. When we construct confidence interval, we actually want to know how much uncertainty are associated with the point estimate for the point, uh, population parameter. And like I said, we use the point estimate to estimate your population, pro um, your population parameter as well. And those estimate that we using when we create those upper boundary and lower boundary, which are what we call the intervals. It's what we call a confidence interval. So the minute we calculate those by using the point estimate, we are creating what we call intervals. And we can call them confidence interval. And I will tell you why I'm calling them confidence interval, because once we make when we make a decision, we need to be confident about the decision that we are making. And I will demonstrate that later on. And when we talk about this point estimate, this or oh, the interval estimates, 
the lower boundary and the upper boundaries, those intervals. They give a range of values and those range of values, they need to take into consideration the variation in the sample statistics that exists from sample to sample because different samples can come with or can um, you can calculate or it, it can have different sample uh, point, point estimate or sample means or sample proportion. Different sample can have different sample means, different proportions. Also, when you build the confidence interval, you need to base it on one sample. You cannot do on multiple samples like we did, like what the uh, sampling distribution does, because sampling distribution takes multiple means and then um, I calculate the sample distribution. So here we only base it on one sample, not on many samples. It also gives you information about the closeness to the unknown population parameter. Because remember, we don't know what the population parameter is, but we can estimate that population parameter by using the point estimate. And when we calculate the confidence intervals, we always calculate them by using the confidence level, which is a percentage, which is a probability. I'm going, don't get confused. A confidence level, which gives you the probability, which is a percentage. It also allows us to say when we conclude we are 99% confident that the true population mean is between those um, intervals, or we are 95% confident that the true mean lies between those two confi oh, confidence intervals. But we should never, ever, ever say we are 100% because we should also allow for margin of errors that can exist. So with confidence interval, it can never be 100%. So it either 80%, 90%, 75%, 99%, but never 100%. And we'll learn how to use those confidence interval or how to get those confidence intervals or confidence levels. So let's look at an example at the high level. Do not worry, do not panic um, when I'm showing you this. I'm just showing you what we're going to be doing. I'm not saying concentrate too much on this. So let's look at the serial fill example. If we have a population with the mean of 368 and the standard deviation of 15, if you take a sample size of n equals to 25, you know you will know that. Okay. The remember here I'm talking about the population. So if I have the population, then if I am calculating the confidence interval based on the population, then I will have my point estimate for, for the population, which will be 368 plus or minus my confidence level, my confidence level, which is that 95% confidence level. We use that 95% confidence level to find that critical value, which I will tell you just now about it, but for now, taking the confidence level and multiplying that with the standard error. You remember the standard error? Standard error, your population standard deviation divided by the square root of n, that is if we do it for the mean, remember that. And we find that once we calculate this equation, we find that the confidence interval is between 362.12 and 373.88. Therefore, it means if I look at my population mean of 368, remember I took a confidence level of 95%, I can say 
it contains 95% of the sample mean that we have. So this is provided if my sample mean is equivalent to my population mean in this instance. There are both 368 because I used the population mean instead of the sample mean. So <clears throat> if in this instance is because we know what the population mean is, but most of the time and in your module as well, you will learn that you will not be given the population mean. So if your population mean is unknown, then we're going to use the sample mean. And that is what your module requires you to do. You are going to be given the sample mean, not the population mean. So we're going to use the sample mean to estimate what the population mean is. So if my population, if sorry, not my population, but if my sample is 362, so it means I'm going to replace this 368 by 362 and calculate my interval. And I will find that my interval by substituting that 362, which is my point estimate plus or minus, and we will do this properly, um, I assure you. I will tell you how to also do the plus or minus plus or minus 1.96, which is my confidence level of 95%, times the standard error. I find that my estimate lies between 356 and 368. Since my population mean of 368 lies in between that, we can make the statement and say, the population mean is included in the confidence and we are 95 percent confident that the population mean uh, the confidence interval contains the population mean okay so what we've learned so far is in practice you only want to take <coughs> one sample like we did with one sample there, we're using only one sample by taking one sample. Number two, we also know that we are not given the population mean, so you don't know if the interval actually contains that population mean. But you will know that Either whether it's 99% confidence or it's 95% with our example, you know that 95% confidence interval that was formed contains your population mean because the population mean was lies between that. How do we then build this confidence interval? So to build a confidence interval as well, we build it in order for us to do estimation, to estimate what the population parameter will be. The estimation process we know, just to refresh our mind, when the population is huge, we take a sample. So if we have the population, we select the sample, we take the sample, measure or point estimate and if we calculate the interval we find that the interval is 40 and 60 and we found that the mean was 50 at 95 percent confidence interval or confidence level then in conclusion we can say you are 95 percent confident that the mean is between 40 and 60 based on the information that you have calculated using your point estimate, which is your sample statistics that come from the sample. So now, how do we then do this calculation? How do we calculate confidence interval? So to calculate confidence interval, we use this formula and the formula is 
your point estimate, which can be the mean or the proportion. In this instance, we use in the mean. So point estimate, the mean, plus or minus. Remember, your confidence interval has the lower boundary and the upper boundary. So this plus or minus creates lower boundary and upper boundary. So plus or minus. Minus creates your lower boundary, plus creates your upper boundary. Plus or minus your critical value, your critical value in this instance is your Z value if we're using the Z table. The critical value is going to be our Z value if we are using the Z table. When we're using other table, I will also explain to you what your critical value is. So how do we then find this critical value? We find the critical value by using the confidence level, which I just said the confidence level is your probability. It's one, my, actually it's one minus the probability value, but it's same, it's the probability that you find in the table, and then you go and find the Z value on the table. I will show you how to do that. So we find the critical value, which is our, for now, just know that your critical value, for the purpose of today, your critical value is your Z value. Sorry. For the purpose of today, your critical value will be your Z value. Nah? We're going to call it the Z value. The critical value is our Z value times the standard error. So since we're doing for the mean, it's going to be the population standard deviation divided by the square root of N. So this formula, we say in a way, let me write it here. If I expand it, it will be your point estimate minus your critical value times your standard error. And you put the bracket like that because this side is your lower entry. And we open the bracket, put the comma, and we put point estimate plus your critical value times your standard error, close bracket. So it means when you do confidence interval, you are always going to expand your table or your formula to be a lower boundary and an upper boundary. If they ask you to only calculate the lower boundary, you're going to use point estimate minus the critical value times the standard error. If they ask you to give only the upper boundary, point estimate plus the critical value times the standard error. Do not make a mistake of swapping them around, putting the plus before the minus. Always know that you need to do the minus first because minus tells you it's a smaller value then minus first, then plus first. Or if you want to remember, always when you get the answer, if, whether you do the plus first, if you do the plus first and you get the answer for, for, for where you were doing the addition and you find that the answer is 56 and then you go and do the minus and you find the answer as 30, let's say for argument's sake, do not write like this 56 comma 30 it's going to be wrong because 30 is small always remember that lower upper so it means you're going to write 30 first and then 56 second so that it starts from 30 it goes to 56 pay attention to the values when you do your answer or when you write your answers. I have seen people do 
the plus first and put the plus answer and then do the the negative and then put the negative answer or they sometimes you might find that your plus and your negative they um uh, one becomes bigger than the other that is <clears throat> i don't know where you will get that but um if you get a, a where you do a negative and you get the value that is bigger but when you write your answer because the chances are both of these two answers 56 and 30 and 30 and 56 might exist as one of the option both of them they might exist as one of the option and if you wrote your answer like this the chances are you will choose 56 and 30 as your answer instead of 30 and 56. So pay attention to that. Okay. So point estimate, which is our parameter, oh, sorry, our statistic, which will be our mean. And we'll look at an example just now. The critical value, which will be based on the confidence level, which is our Z value that we're going to use or we're going to get by using the confidence level, which is our probability <coughs> on the table to go find the Z value. And those Z value are our critical value. The standard error, which is your standard deviation divided by the square root of N for the mean. So far, any question, any comments before I move? Any comments, any questions? Are you still happy? Are you still here? We are here. Yes, we're still here. Okay. Processing. Yeah, it will get, it will get better with time just now. When we do an, 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 ex, an exercise, you will understand everything when we put it together. Okay, so we kept on saying critical value is our Z value, and I kept on saying we're going to find it by using the confidence level. So what is the confidence level? Confidence level, we use it to calculate the confidence interval, and it will also assist because the confidence interval helps us with the estimation process as we know that we use it to find the Z value. The confidence level you will be given as a percentage. Now I need to be very, very careful here. It is always going to be a percentage. And that percentage usually is 98. Oh, let's start, let's start at 80 or oh, 75. Let's start at 75. It can be 75, 80, 90, 95, 99. I will show you a table just now. That is that confidence interval. It's always in 100% format. So with the confidence interval, which is one minus alpha, the confidence interval. So this 95% that I'm referring to, it is one minus alpha, where our alpha, it is what we call level of significance. I hope you're going to remember all this. A confidence interval, if for example, I'm using 95%, 95% confidence level, it is the same as one minus alpha. And one minus alpha, it is your 95% confidence level. Where alpha, it is what we call level of significance. 
So, if I know that my 95% confidence interval or confidence level is, I need to convert this to a decimal. So I always work with 0 0.95. And I know that that 0 0.95 is one minus alpha. So I can make it equal and then calculate the level of significance, which is my alpha value. And my alpha, which is now, this alpha is what we call probability. On the table, if I'm using the Z, so since we're going to use the Z table, on the Z table, my alpha 0 0.05, it is my probability on that table. And we're going to learn how to do, how to find the critical value using this level of confidence. Okay, so let's recap on what we just did or said. The others are just theory that you need to go back and read and read. I'm not going to repeat that. All I'm going to repeat is this. Remember? When we find the confidence interval, we're going to use the point estimate plus or minus the critical value times the standard error. And we know that our critical value, we're going to find it by using the confidence level, which the confidence level, we now know that that confidence level is one minus alpha. And we use that one minus alpha to find the value of alpha, which is also called level of significance. And it's also called the probability on the table when we're using the Z table. So it means our alpha is our probability, and it's also called level of significance. And we use that probability or level of significance to go find the critical value on the table so that we can come and substitute it onto the formula. Okay. Now, At a high level, let's go back. We know that we're doing confidence interval, and for today, we're only doing confidence interval for the population. So it means confidence level and the general formula we're going to apply when we do the population is known, uh, sorry, population mean when the population standard deviation is known, when the population standard deviation is unknown, and when the population proportion is, uh, when we need to do confidence interval for the proportion. So, for today, we only going to concentrate on this part and apply confidence level and the general formula for today. Okay, so how do we then do that? When we find the confidence interval for the mean, there are several assumptions that also needs to be made in order to, to know that which confidence interval you need to be constru constructing. The first assumption that needs to be met is that, which is the key to everything that we do the population standard deviation has to be given. They have to give you sig sigma or they have to tell you that the population standard deviation is this. 
I hope I am clear. You will be given sigma, which is that symbol. You will be given sigma. If not sigma in a in a symbol, they will tell you that the population standard deviation is this much. Then you will know that the population standard deviation is known or it is given. The population needs to be normally distributed. And if the population is not uh, large enough, then we need to use the large sample. Those two assumptions for the purpose <laughs> of your module you do not have to worry too much. The only thing that you need to worry a lot about, but you need to know those assumptions in case they ask you questions uh, on confidence interval. It's one of those concepts where they can ask you questions, theoretical questions, and they can ask you calculations. So you just need to know how to, uh, the assumptions as well. But only one that is important for now that will guide us in terms of whether are we using the t table or are we using the z table it is the population standard deviation if it is given or it is known to us from the question from the statement that they give you then we know that we do confidence interval for the mean where the population standard deviation is known and if so then we can calculate the confidence interval by using the point estimate. Remember, PE point estimate plus or minus our critical value times the standard error. And in terms of the mean, when the population standard deviation is known, our point estimate is our sample statistic, which is the mean plus or minus the critical value as you can see there it says z alpha divided by 2 which will be our critical value by using z alpha divided by 2 we divide alpha by 2 because there are two sides on the confidence interval there is the lower boundary and the upper boundary so we need to split that confidence interval so it will be z alpha divided by 2 times the standard error, which is the population standard deviation divided by the square root of n. So, before we do everything, let's find the critical value. Finding the critical value, for example, it's easy. Remember, we have two sides. So, I'm going to not use this because I think it's uh, more complex for now. So we're going to go black screen. Black screen. Okay. Now, if they tell us, remember we're looking for the critical value. So if they tell us, we need to find um, at alpha, oh, not alpha, at 95% confidence interval or 95% confidence level. In your module, they don't talk about confidence level. They will always say 95% confidence interval. You must know that they're referring to the confidence level. When they say at 95% confidence interval, at 90% confidence interval, at 99% confidence interval, you need to know that they are referring to the confidence level. So if they say at 95% confidence interval, all what you need to know or what you do is to convert a 95% to a decimal, which is 95. And what we know as well is that 0, 0.95 is the same as 1 minus alpha. Remember that it is your confidence level. 
Then we need to solve for alpha. So since alpha is negative on this side, we can bring it this side, it will be positive. And we can bring 0, 0,95 to the other side, then it will be 1 minus 0, 0,95. And our alpha will be equals to 0, 0, 0,05. That is our level of significance. So since I have the level of significance, I still need to go find the critical value. And I know that my critical value is alpha divided by two. So if my critical value is alpha divided by two, I know what my alpha is. So therefore my Z will be 0, 0,05 divided by two, which tells me my Z will be equals to 0, 0,025. And I'm going to put a zero here at the end. Now I need to take this. I need to take this information and go find my critical value on the table. So, I will go out and leave the slideshow and stop sharing. And share my entire screen. Just give me a sec. I've got so many things open on my screen. Please bear with me. As I close all of the things that, is, that are open. And the slideshow. Just cut. I don't want any of those things that I wrote. So we need to go to the table. Let's bring up. Remember, this is what we worked on. We need to go find the critical value for Z 0, 0,0250. So we need to go to the cumulative standardized normal distribution table that we have been using for the past weeks which is table E2. And remember, we need to go to the negative side because on the negative side, that's where we find the smaller probabilities. Don't even bother to go to the positive side. So we come here in the negative side, in the negative side table. We go onto this table. We loop inside here because we're looking for Z 0, 0,0250. So we only interested in those values there at the bottom of Z. So inside this table, we need to look for a value that looks like that. 0, 0,0. Uh, 1.96. Then it means I must go down. Go oh, down, yes. And one comma minus one comma nine six so not this one that is one. that one zero comma two five zero so one. there is zero comma two five zero so we need to go out and we get Z of zero comma zero two five zero. We find minus one comma nine, and we go out at the top and we find six. Now, on this, at this point, I'm going to say ignore 
what we've learned in the previous sessions where we stick to the rule and keep the minus and then go find the plus and then this and then that. No. In this instance, I'm going to say, once you have the answer there, you can just say it's plus or minus. This is our critical value. We don't even have to worry about the plus or minus because remember our equation, which was the mean plus or minus, the critical value, which is Z alpha divided by two times the standard error of the square root of N divided by three. So this whole thing, it is this whole thing because it is whole, all this. The plus or minus are taken care of by that plus or minus on the equation. So we are going to ignore the, the negative sign in front and only keep the actual value. And that's how you're going to read the table. So you're just going to say it is, your critical value is 1,96. And then we use that to substitute into the formula. So it means once we find the confidence level, and we find our level of significance, then we calculate our, or we go, we calculate our P value or our probability by dividing the level of significance by two, which is still going to give you the probability. So the, all these are still probability, but I'm, I don't want to call it probability as yet. I'm only going to call the last bit so that you don't get confused. You can only get confused when we do hypothesis testing because then with hypothesis testing, I'm going to say this is the probability as well. For now, we use the confidence level to find the level of significance. And we use the level of significance to go find the probability and we use the probability to find the critical value, which is equals to 1,96. And once we have the critical value, then we can substitute into the formula. Now, I want you to find, let's go back to our presentation. I want you, I'm going to go black screen again. I want you to find a 99% confidence interval. I want you to find the critical value for a 99% confidence interval. That is your exercise. Let's do it step by step. Actually, find for me the level of significance. And once we have the level of significance, then we can move to the next step. What is your level of significance? Let me see if there are any comments. It's 0, 0,99 is equal to 1 minus alpha. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's do that. So, zero comma nine nine is equals to one minus alpha. Yes, then our alpha will be one minus zero comma nine nine. Okay. And we get zero comma zero one. That is your alpha. So now I want you to go find your Z alpha divided by two. Zero comma zero zero five. So it will be zero comma zero zero one divided by by two, which will give you zero comma zero. How many zeros? 
0.005. So now I want you to take <laughs> this value and go find the value on the table. So let's go to the table. Remember, we're only going to be on the positive on the negative side. So we're looking for Z of 0, 0.005 inside the table. Double zero five. It seems it lies in between two values. Should we divide or take the average of the two Z values? Okay. <laughs> so it lies between those two values because if I if I take this one is one uh, more and if I use this one is one less. So in terms of this, in terms of ninety nine percent, we take both of the values. No, we don't take both of the values. We take one. So you always go into take the value that it is not more than. So let's see. This is more, this is less. So if I round off, they will also be the same, but this one will be more accurate than the other one because this is more than. So therefore, for 99%, it will be 2,558. And that's what we use in statistics, I'm going to use two comma five eight. Okay, so the other value that has more exceptions as well. So let's go back to the presentation. So we know that this one is 2,58, our confidence level. The other value that I want you to find it is 90%. Can somebody mute in the meantime? Sorry, that's me. At 90%, let's go find the level of significance. It's 0 0.1. Okay, so it is 0, 0,90 is equals to 1 minus alpha, where alpha will be 1 minus 0, 0,90, which will be equals to 0, 0,10. Ne? Then let's go find the critical value, which is Z alpha divided by 2. Z, our alpha is 0, 0,10 divided by 2. When you answer the questions as well, please do not do shortcuts. Follow all the steps that I'm showing you. You will never get it wrong. Okay? So zero what is comma, Z? Alpha? 0, 0,05. It will be 0, 0,05. 0, 0, 0, so now, if we go to the table, if we come here to, onto the table, 
and we're looking for z of 0 comma 0 0.5. You will notice that it also like similar to the one that we had before, but this one is a little bit different because this is five up. It's not longer even one up, one less or one more. Um, in statistics, what they did instead of selecting one, they took both. So for zero comma, 0 0.5, we're going to use 1,6 and we're going to take 4,5. So for 90%, the critical value is 1,9, uh, sorry, 1,6,4,5. For 95%, our alpha is 0 0,05 and our critical value is 1,96. For 99%, our alpha is 0 0,01 and our critical value is 2,58. For a 90%, our alpha is 0, 0,10 and our critical value is 1,645. And there are other critical values. We're going to go and learn more about them just now. So, What I've just explained, how to find the critical value. Critical values, we use them to define our boundaries. So you can see that the minus, remember, we had our point estimate, or let's use the, the actual point estimate, which is the mean. Our equation is the mean plus or minus the critical value, which is alpha divided by 2 times the standard error, which is the population standard deviation times the square root of n. So because of the plus or minus, minus will be in the lower boundary, the plus will be in the upper boundary. So we're creating this boundary. And we know that this area here, it's 95%, which is the bigger area, is the 95%, where the smaller areas, which are these outside, these are our alpha divided by twos. Those are the areas that we are looking for. So we say if the value of the mean falls outside of this boundary, then we can con conclude if it falls within, we can conclude that it falls within this. If it falls outside, then we can not use um, the estimate. Okay. So for a 95% confidence interval, our critical value is 1,96. Our alpha divided by 2 is 0, 0,025. And these are some of the confidence intervals. We covered 90, you know how to find that. We covered 95 and 90, 99. So you can also find 98, which you will find that it, the critical value will be 2,33. For 80 is 1,28. Uh, the majority of the critical values that they are used in most of the the questions in your study guide or in your in your module 95 percent is used my, uh, most often followed by 90 percent the others likely highly unlikely that they will use them but they are and also 99 sometimes they do use it so those are the most commonly used with 95 being the most used 
95% confidence because when we do confidence intervals, you will see with lots of exercises, they will keep on asking 95% confidence, 95%. When we do hypothesis testing, most of the time they will ask 95%, 95%. So they always constantly use a 95% confidence interval. Okay, so let's now do an example and see how we can apply all this that we just learned. A sample circuit from a large normal population has the mean resistance of 2.2. We know from the past testing that the population standard deviation is 0.35. Remember the assumptions? And I said you can ignore the first one where they said the population needs to be or the sample needs to be large enough. In this instance, the sample is not that large enough. But anyway, the two, the one that is most important, I said population standard deviation, if it's known. So since they have given us so it means the population standard deviation is known. Therefore, it means when the population standard deviation is known, we use point estimate plus or minus. We're going to find the critical value using the Z table, which will be Z alpha divided by two times the standard error. So going back to our question, we need to identify what we are given onto this question. We are given N, which is equals to 11. We are also given the mean from the population is large, large normal population. So one of the other um, one of the other assumptions, large population, it's also there. And we are given the mean from a sample. Remember, this is a sample circuit from a large population has the mean. So it means this mean comes from this 11th sample. So it means we are also given the mean of 2.2.2. .2 .2. We know from the past testing that the population standard deviation, because they have given them a population standard deviation, and it is 0, 0.35. So we have the mean, we have the population standard deviation, we have the sample. We need to find the critical value. 95% confidence interval, remember, at 95% confidence interval, what is the true mean resistance of the population? So we need to estimate if the population mean falls within that estimate. Within the interval. So we need to go find 95% confidence interval. So we know that at 95% confidence interval, it is 0, 0,95 is equals to 1 minus alpha. Therefore, we know that alpha will be equal to 0, 0,05. And to find the critical value, we take Z alpha divided by 2, which is Z 0, 0,05 divided by 2, which is equal to Z of 0, 0,0250. Just to recap, so that people don't get confused, so we go to the Z table and go find our critical value. We come to the table, we look for 0, 0,0250, which is there. We go outside the table and we find 1,96. 9, sorry, 1,9, and we go up. We find that it corresponds to 1,96. Then we come back to our question and we say our critical value it's 1,96. So this is critical, critical value. 
So since we have the critical value, we need to take our equation, which we have the X bar plus or minus the critical value times the standard error. So X bar plus or minus our critical value, which is Z alpha divided by two times the standard error, which is the standard deviation divided by the square root of N. Our, our mean is 2.2. Substitute 2.2 plus or minus our critical value. We did find it. It's 1,961,96 times the standard error, standard deviation of 0, 0,35 divided by. Our square root of n, which is square root of 11. We can do, we can solve the other side. I'm going to use my calculator from, from here, not the expensive one. I think I can still get away with this. Okay, I think so. So 0, 0,35, please double check for me because I'm going to uh, Do you also get 3,31? Yeah, yes. Okay, multiply, because it's a long number, I don't want to write the long number. Multiply by 1,96 equals 0, 0,26. So here yeah, I have, oh, uh, please call out the number. You can leave four digits, so we'll have 2,2 plus or minus 0, 0,2 0, 0,2068 so we can leave at four decimal because it's enough with four decimals so now since i have <coughs> in this smaller simple form you can start splitting the equation by saying 2.2 .2 minus 0, 0,2068. Uh, not close bracket. We're not closing the bracket as yet. We're putting a semicolon. And you go 2.2 .2 .2 0, 0,2068. Close bracket. So now go calculate. What is 2.2 .2 minus 0, 0,2068? That's 1,9932. 1,9932, semicolon, 2,2 2 plus 0, 0,2068. 2,4068. 2, And that is your confidence interval. We have found the confidence interval and we can make conclusions. So I'm just going to come here. So you can also write it in this manner or you can leave your answer in this manner. So depending on how you find the options, but usually the standard way of writing it is with the bracket. And we know that this is the lower boundary and this is the upper boundary so if the question was asking you to only give the answer to the lower boundary you know that you're going to use the minus if they ask you to find the answer in the upper boundary you're only going to use the plus sign so how do we then conclude we can conclude by saying we are 95 percent confident that the true mean resistance is between 
1,9932 and 2,4068 OHMS. And that's how we conclude. And with that, conclude what we needed to learn today. <laughs> um, to remember that the key thing with everything is the population standard deviation. Is it given? If it's given, then we're going to find the critical value from the Z table. The other key thing, how we find the critical value. If, for example, let's say here, yeah, they didn't say confidence interval, but they said at 5% level of significance. Are you going to get confused what they mean? If the question was determine a 5% level of significance for the true mean resistance of the population. No, because that's one minus um, A. No, level of significance. What is level of significance? Alpha value. It's your alpha value. So if they give you 5% level of significance, what is the next step? What will be to your find, next step? To find the Z alpha over two. You will use the, you start from, you start from here. If they give you alpha, you go just using the alpha value to go find the critical value. If they give you 95% confidence, then you start by saying one minus alpha. So you just need to pay attention to that because some questions sometimes they might not give you a 95% confidence interval, but they will give you a 5% level of significance. And you will notice this when we also do hypothesis testing. They will use them interchangeably. Either give you the confidence interval or give you a level of significance. But you just need to know where you are or and what the question or the statement is giving or what are you given in your statement. Let's look at an example, then we, we can go home or go to sleep. Africa Check is interested in the activities of fake news tweets. From a sample of 50 tweets, there are 100 impressions on average. Assume fake news tweets activity is normally distributed and the population standard deviation is 25 impression. Keyword, it's even highlighted in dark population standard deviation. So we know that the population standard deviation is known. And if it's known, we're going to find Z alpha divided by two. Or we're going to use the formula X bar plus or minus the critical value alpha divided by two times the standard error. At 90% confidence in interval estimate for the population will be, what is 90% confidence interval estimate for the population mean? So they're giving us a 90%. So what are we also given? We can quickly do that. We are given the sample size, which is N of 50, 
you are also given on average. You must also, when you read the, the, the questions, pay attention to the key things that they give you. So yeah, they, they didn't say mean, but you need to know that the mean is the same as the average. Remember that, that is what we did when we were doing study unit three. The mean is the average. So our mean from the sample with 100 impressions on average, so it means our mean is 100. We are also given the standard deviation, which is 25. Remember? We are given 0 0.90 one minus alpha because that's what 95% confidence level is. Therefore, our alpha is 0 0.10. Remember that. And we need to go find the critical value. And our critical value, Z, alpha divided by 2, which is Z of 0 0.10. We know that that is Z of 0, 0.05. And if we go to the table, remember on the table we set the critical value for Z, 0, 0, 0, 0.05, it's 1.645. So we have the critical value, we can substitute the values. So it's 100 plus or minus our critical value of 1,645 times our standard error, which is 25, divided by the square root of 50. Do the calculation. 25 divided by the square root of 50. Three comma five four. Multiply that with one comma six four five. Five comma eight one six. Twenty five divided by fifty equals three comma five three five five multiply by one comma six four five equals do you get the same five comma eight one five nine yes 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 since it's five nine five uh which will be five comma uh, i don't want to round off quickly so i'm gonna keep it up until five eighty one fifty nine five i'm just okay. i hope i will remember that okay. so five comma 80, 9, 51. I'm joking. I don't know. I'm writing crap. Yeah. 5, 8, 1. 5, 8, 1. 5, 9. 5, 5. Yes, let's yes. keep it up to there. So now let's expand 100 minus 5, 8, 1, 5, 9, 5. Semicolon 100 plus 5, comma 8, 1, 5, 9, 5. The other thing, what? Uh, okay, so but these are commas. I don't know. Copy and paste. I didn't fix the. 
the commas there. <clears throat> So you can leave your answer to whatever the number of decimals you have. So on this one, it has four decimals. So it means our answer should be in four decimals as well. So what is the first 100 minus 5.81959? comma. 1840. Uh -huh. Sorry. 8 94,8 no 1840. Okay. So the uh, option 1. Yeah, let's 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 take it slow. 1840. And on the other side, 100 plus will it's give 105. us 105.8195, which is 8960. If we round it off to four decimals, because then we add, we add one thing. Okay. So that will give us option number one. And that is the only ex activity I had, but that is not the only activity we can do. So let's see what time is it now. And slideshow. Because I just took it from here and that's where I said it's just a copy and paste. I just copied from this document so we can go and find the follow-up questions from there since we still have 30 minutes we can use this um, uh, where is it Let's say such find Africa. Well, it's not Africa with a K A at the end. This one found it. So we just did that one. So we can move to the next. So the next one it says, suppose there. Sample size increases to 100. So in our, oh, I, I removed it. So we had our N is 50, now it's 100. Our X is 100. Our standard deviation is 50. Let's just go back to the statement. Uh, oh, it's 25. Stand, uh, it's 25. It's 25. And we did find our Z. Alpha divided by two, which for 90%, I'm not going to repeat it because we did find it there. It was 1,645. So calculate. I'm just going to leave it to you now. Give it some time. Uh, 
calculate and then we will come back and do it together. Do it on your own and then we'll do it together. Ms. Liz, kindly reshare the screen. Apologies, just join from the other class. I don't know the values. Um, Lizzie, I think you, you know the, the chat feature is also turned off for this meeting, eh? So if you're looking for answers on the chat, it, we won't be able to post it. I'm able to post on the chat. Ah, what preferential <laughs> chat is that? <laughs> Me too, I can post on the chat. Mine's grayed out. It's fine, I'll mind my own business here and watch. You signed in as a guest. Uh, the previous weeks, were you able to post? Yeah, I see I'm signing as a guest. I don't know why it's done that to me. It's unfair. <laughs> okay. It's okay. Never mind. I, 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 it's okay. I, I see my dilemma. Okay. You must join using your my life email. If I thought it's your work. No, no, I, th I thought it would, I've, I've, I've got a profile set up just for Unison. and I signed in with that account. So now I don't know why it launched me as a guest. Oh, okay. All right, so let's, let's do the answer then. So, our mean is 100. Our standard, oh, our critical value, it's one, one comma six, six four, five. four five. Our standard deviation, is twenty five. Square root of our n, hundred. Hundred. What is the answer? 25 divided by the square root of 100 times 141.645? Let's expand. 100 minus 4.1125. Double colon. 100. Plus four 
the answer for the minus? Nine five. Nine five. Eight eight seven five. Seven five. For the plus. One one oh four. One two five. One oh four one. One one two five. And it is option number. Oh. Easy, ne? <laughs> um, to calculate very easy. I think you might find it challenging when you need to find the critical value. But always remember that when they give you a 90% confidence interval, or a 95% confidence interval, what are the steps that you need to follow to find that? Um, I don't think we will find another example because this is what we're going to do next week, uh, and not next week on Saturday. Um, as you can see, the first one was 90, this one is 95. So you just need to know how to use all those confidence. So this one is 99. And you can see that even on this question, you are asked some uh, theoretical questions. So, um, for example, what we just did now, we increased the sample size. So let's go back to our question that we, we did. Let's go back here. So what what they are asking in that question is if we had let, uh, this one was 50 50 and 100 okay coming back to the question that they are asking now they say when only the sample size increases the confidence intervals narrow or widens uh, uh when it decreases it becomes wider if it increases it becomes uh, uh, wider or narrower. So you can see there, they talk about the sample size. They also yet talk about the confidence level, but we didn't do any confidence level. So if let's look at their sample size. Um, what they are saying with the narrower, it means, let's say it was uh, uh, 10 sample size, your N is 10, and let's say the confidence interval year was two and an eight now nah? and when we increase our n and n to 100 then now this because when we increase the sample size what decreases is your 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 standard error decreases so when your sample size is smaller, the um, the standard error is big is is going to be bigger. When the sample size is smaller, your standard error will be bigger. When the sample size is bigger, your standard error will be smaller. So this might be one comma one comma four. Let's say for argument's sake. Mm. So what this question is saying is if your sample size increases, then your your sample, your uh, what do you call your your confidence interval narrows, so it becomes smaller. If your sample size decreases, it becomes wider. Only when when that happens. Uh, so we're looking for the incorrect one. So let's because yeah, I am doing my own assumption. So let's look at the actual question that we answered because there we increased and decreased the sample size. Remember that. So remember, this was when the sample size was, your N here was 50. And your N here is 100. So let's look at the difference between these two. When the sample size is smaller, the confidence level is 
bigger, it's wider. You can see there, it's 94 and 105. If I don't count the decimals, 94 and 105 for a smaller sample size. And here we have a bigger sample size and the confidence interval is 95 and 104, which is smaller, which is narrower now. So what it means is when the sample size, so the two statements are correct, that is correct. When the sample size increases, this becomes narrower, it becomes smaller because the sample size is bigger. When it's smaller, it becomes wider because the sample size is smaller. So now you need to also test if it's a confidence level problem. So here it says if confidence level increases, it becomes narrower. If it decreases, it becomes, uh, or oh, if it increases, it becomes wider. If it decreases, it becomes narrower. So you need to, you can use one of, one of the example. So actually we can use this example. So for, to answer that question, we can use the one that we did. To answer the second part of the question, we can use this because on question three and question four, what they're asking you to do is change the confidence interval. Based on the answer that we will get here, next on Saturday, we will be able to answer those two questions, these two questions. So on Saturday, we can answer these two questions because the examples that we're going to use on Saturday will be those two, where we change the confidence intervals. But this is just what I want to bring to your attention that you will need to know also how to, to interpret and do theory as well. And then, uh, okay. Okay. So this one as well we can do on Saturday or any other day as well because this one you just need to apply what you've learned with the confidence interval to say if it's 90 which one will be because this is less this is the mid one and this is the bigger one so which one will it be so if it's smaller uh, confidence interval which one will it be which confidence interval will, will, will it take? Uh, but we can look at that once we do the activity on Saturday. Uh, I'm just looking for other options. Oh, there we go. So as you can see here, the question is asking you just to calculate the upper limit. Remember, uh, on the equation, when they ask you for the upper limit, which one are you using? The minus or the plus? The plus. plus. The plus. plus. We'll use the plus side of things to answer this question. But this will do on Wednesday next week because it deals with proportions. Okay. Uh, these are proportions. Okay. So uh, that concludes today's session. Then I will see you on Saturday when we do. Oh, sorry, I need to finish things properly. Uh, I will see you on Saturday when we continue and do confidence interval or when we construct confidence interval for the mean when the population standard deviation is unknown. With that, what we have planned today is the basic concepts of confidence interval. We've learned um, how to build up the confidence interval, what, um, what is required in terms of the confidence level that we need 
to first find the confidence level by using one minus alpha and then use the alpha value, which is also called the level of significance, uh, to go find the critical value on the table. And we've learned that the critical value on the table, we find it by using the probability inside the table and go outside and go find the Z value. So our critical value is the Z value on a cumulative standardized normal distribution table. We also learned how to construct a confidence interval by using the formula point estimate plus or minus the critical value times the standard error, where our point estimate for today was the sample mean plus or minus the critical value Z alpha divided by two times the population standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. With that, any question, any comment? Um, Lizzie, maybe just one. Um, I don't know if you've shared it in any of your emails. Where can we get our hands on more question papers? I think the UNISA website only gives us two. Is there another place where we can download more of these question papers? Yeah. No, I don't know. Uh, but, you know, in all the platforms, UNISA platforms where it's got STA 1610 students, you can just post there and say, anyone with the past exam paper post, okay. then they can send it to you. All right. I will gladly also love to have some because I need to create more activities and examples. I only have one that I downloaded from my UNISA and I'm using the old tutorial letter. Okay. That I found. I'll check. Yeah. So if we can get more exam papers, that will be great as well. I know that some of some of the people might be selling them because they will sell you with the answers. You don't have to buy the answers. You can just um, ask for a question paper without the solutions and we can work out the solutions yourself. It's easy. You don't have to spend a lot of money on that. Um, and when we do revisions as well, because we, I, I, if, we, if I have those question papers, all of our revisions are based on the past exam papers. So it will be very helpful that you can work through them. Okay, if there are no questions, you can stop the recording. And with that,